Wow. <laughs> yeah. Today we're gonna to talk a little bit about uh, jumping your car using one of those portable battery packs uh, that you see all over the place these days. And there's a couple different types. There's the traditional type like this. This is a lead acid based one. And this is a very, very quality jump starter. And it's very heavy as well. This thing uses two gauge cables uh, on it. So these cables are extremely thick and heavy duty and are Really, if you wanna jump a lot of stuff, generally speaking, this is gonna be my recommendation. So the alternative to this style is those lithium ion based ones that are much smaller. And this company sent me a couple units to test out. So right now here in Minnesota, it's 15 below zero. This has actually been sitting outside uh, in the car. So this should also be at around 15 below zero. Uh, this one was sitting in my garage, so it's a little bit warmer. Uh, but we're gonna test these things out. I'm gonna see if I can find one of the vehicles that won't start. I kind of am worried all of them are gonna start fine. Yep, that one's fine. The F-250. Here we go. So unfortunately we're gonna have to simulate a dead battery and the way we're gonna do that is I'm actually gonna take the cables off of the 6.2 liter and we're gonna see if we can start it with just the jumper packs. All right, we got the hood opened up. I disconnected the positive lead from the battery and I have the JNC 770R. I'll link to this exact one if I can or one that's very similar in the description. So what we've basically done is replace the battery uh, or simulating a battery that was 100% dead to where it basically doesn't even have a battery. So we're gonna connect it to this jumper and see if this thing will crank this thing over. Here we go. It looks like that's actually not gonna be able to jump it. So not enough cold cranking amps on that jump starter. Oh. Oh, it did get it. It got it. Ha <laughs> ha. That was uh, by the skin of its teeth though. Shut it off because I don't want the engine to warm up a lot because we want to use this as our simulation. So this jump starter right here, the 770R, I think it's like 1,700 peak amps, I want to say. This thing was able to start the 6.2 liter V8 engine uh, at 14 below zero. Now given this thing was probably at about 30 or 40 degrees uh, when we performed the jump, this charger itself wasn't at 15 below zero. So that kind of gives you an idea of what a really quality lead acid based jumper pack is able to do. Now let's move on to the lithium ion one that was sent to me by Fox Speed. So inside of this kit, we get our jumper cables. Now, right away you can see that it's just comical. The size of these cables is comical compared to these huge two gauge wires. So we have two gauge wires here and I don't know what these are, maybe, oh, eight gauge, it says right there. So eight gauge wires versus two gauge wires. Now, I think this thing is roughly like $75 and this one's like $150. So it's not a direct comparison cost wise. Uh, here is the charger and I do have this thing charged up right there. It says 96%. We're gonna get this rigged up. I'm gonna follow the instructions, which is you connect the jumper clamps to the car battery, then plug that into the battery pack and then start the car. So these clamps right here on this uh, have a bunch of different protections built into them. In fact, when I first got this thing, uh, Ruben shorted these things out directly to themselves just to see if they would spark. Mm -hmm. Oh, it, it detected it. What does it say? It says... <laughs> Maybe you have to press the power button first. No, it's too smart. That's annoying. Not even a little smart? <laughs> well, uh, apparently you can do this and it doesn't start on fire. <laughs> so... So it passes the weld test? Yeah, shake the product strongly. Don't expose product to the sun. 
Do not short circuit at any time. This is able to sense both reverse polarity and if there's a short circuit. I like to look at which side the wire comes in on the handle and then have that portion of the jaw connect more directly to the leads. So I'm gonna do that one right like that. So now we're ready. Oh, I should also mention this thing has a light built into it. It's not super bright, but it does work. And two different uh, USB chargers. And then right here is where we're gonna plug our cord in. I hear it making a clicking sound. All right, let's see what happens here. Let's go see if it'll start it up. Okay, so nothing happened there. It says we're down to 77%. This thing claims in the Amazon description that it can start up to an eight liter gas engine. And right here in the instructions is where it does state that it can start up to an 8 liter gas engine or a 6.5 liter diesel engine. So it should be able to start this no problem. What we do know is that you cannot use this as a dedicated replacement uh, for your car battery. Like uh, this pack right here. This pack right here we could use this instead of a battery in a temporary situation, uh, whereas that one you cannot. So what we're simulating now is I have a pair of jumper cables coming down to this little lawnmower battery here, and this thing is 215 cold cranking amps, so it's not a very uh, powerful battery to say the least. So we've got that hooked up, and right here we can see that we are reading 11.5. 11.7 volts right now. So let's go ahead and test to see if it will start with just that. Uh, I'm sure it won't, but let's just see what happens. So as you saw, nothing happened whatsoever. So now we'll go ahead and add our high quality Fox Speed uh, jumper pack. Uh, you can see right here, we are at 77%. So we should have plenty of charge uh, for this to be able to do this. So. Uh, in my opinion, it should be able to jump it no problem uh, if this were to be uh, living up to its claims. So we've got it connected. Let's go make sure that these uh, leads are connected well. And now let's go uh, crank the engine over. So you heard that as I cranked it over right at the beginning, it was sending some more amps through, uh, but it, it limited out and it just barely started to turn the motor before I think this thing completely disengaged. In fact, it's flashing three dots on this, which I think probably means that we've over exceeded its capabilities. Now, to be fair, this thing did work starting my brother's car when his battery was just a little bit low. And that's kind of what these are for, is for when you go crank your car over and it won't quite start, uh, this thing will put you over the top and uh, will make the car start. I'll show you that video right now. Oh. <laughs> Attach the negative to the negative, positive to the positive. This says that it's reading 12 volts right now. All right, everything's connected. All right, go. Wow. Yeah, it's fine, I guess. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Man, how did they do that using thermostat wire? So as you can see, it did work for Ruben in that instance. Now I do have one more of these jumpers uh, that they sent to me. They sent me two of them. Uh, so let's uh, hook up a second one of these jumpers and see if with two of these and the lawnmower battery, if we can get it to start. So I'll be right back, I'll go grab that. So I've got my second set of clamps on here now. So we have our lawnmower battery, and then we're going to have two of these jumper packs now. This one's at 100%, and this one's actually at like 70 degrees, and this one's at 73%, and is at like minus 15. So I don't think that that really makes any difference. In fact, let's start try uh, starting it on the pack that's at 70 degrees and 100%. All right, so let's see if this will start it. 
Here we go. All right, I am I am totally blown away. Uh, I have no idea how it did that. This jumper pack started that thing right up somehow. This thing's 100% charged and it has, and it's at 70 degrees. So I'm not sure if that's what did it. Uh, let's try the other jumper pack on those cables and let's see if that'll do it now. So I think something with the jumper pack being really cold uh, or it the fact that it's only at 70% uh, made the difference. Let's, tra let's start it one more time with this other one. I'm just really surprised that it started it at all. We'll we'll try it like this one more time. Let's do one more thing. Let's uh, take the battery off of this. I'm gonna try starting it without the lawnmower battery attached. So you could see that it did start the truck with no external battery connected, uh, but it didn't stay running or it was cutting in and out as the the relay was clicking in and out inside of this uh, this jumper here. So it won't work to run the truck uh, exclusively, but it did start the truck. Now we have started it a few times, so obviously the engine's not at 15 below zero, but I haven't let it idle or anything. It's probably ran for a, a total of two minutes maybe. I am very, very surprised, very, very surprised that it started the truck. So I think the fact that this uh, other jumper had already been used once and it was really cold made all the difference. So. Uh, when stuff is cold, it just doesn't work like it should, generally speaking. So my final takeaway is that both of these jumper packs here, as well as this large one, have their place. They kind of serve different purposes. Uh, these ones are going to put you over the top in most situations. So if you pick a couple of these up and have them in your car or whatever, uh, it's not a bad idea. And most likely you'll be able to get going again. If you want something that can almost stand in temporarily as your car's battery, then you're gonna want something like this. Or if you just have general like stuff that you're working on, like I use this a lot of times when I'm like, wanna start a lawnmower up, but I don't have a battery in it. I can just clamp this on there, start it up and go where I need to go and then take it off. So it's really, really versatile with that. Also the cables are so heavy duty. I use this thing for jump starting backhoes and tractors and other stuff like that that requires crazy cold cranky amps. So if you want a jumper for around the farm, this thing is gonna be way more versatile. This thing also has uh, a disconnect switch so we can turn off the power to the ends of these cables so that they don't accidentally short out. Uh, and then it also has a 12 volt uh, outlet as well as a couple USB ports and a light. So have been really happy with this, I'll link to that. And then I'll also link to these here, these exact ones that I did use, uh, as well as a couple others. But I do appreciate these guys sending these over. Half the reason I let them send them is that I think the name is absolutely hilarious. Anyway, that's the deal. Uh, I think that was a fun experiment to be able to see uh, what we could do. So I'm really pleased with these little things. The fact that it started this 6.2 liter engine when it was this cold out at like 15 below zero is really impressive, even if even though it had started a few times, but kind of a weird deal where the first one wouldn't start it uh, by itself, but apparently if they're really cold, uh, they don't have quite enough uh, juice to to crank it over. If you guys thought this was helpful, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe underneath this video for more videos just like this one. And we'll see you guys in the next one. I'm freezing. I'm gonna reassemble this and, and go uh, where it's warmer. <laughs> Oofta, oofta. Fox speed. <laughs> That's such bad branding. <sighs> They're like, oh, speed, sounds cool, but we can do it with the X. On Fox, Fox Speed. Everyone will think it's good. <laughs> I'm just not realizing that. It sounds like Fox Peed. <laughs>